No matter what NLP application we build, pre-processing text to get it ready for modeling will almost always be our first step. So we'll kick off part one by talking about that and specifically a pre-processing step called tokenization. Typically, we'll start off an NLP project with a data set of text. This could be a collection of forum posts we scraped, tweets, transcriptions of podcasts, or even entire books. Specifically for NLP, you'll often see this data set referred to as a corpus. And this data is considered unstructured, that is, it hasn't been organized into any uniform format. Pre-processing this corpus will be our first pass at giving some structure to this data and preparing it for further analysis. And typically in NLP, the first pre-processing step is to break our documents down into words. So, given a document, we segment it into sentences, and further segment those sentences into words, numbers, and punctuation. These individual pieces are called tokens, and the process of segmenting our document into tokens is called tokenization. Now, just to be sure, when tokenizing English, tokens mostly map to words, but punctuation, numbers, and other bits also count as tokens. So how do we go about tokenizing text? At first glance, tokenizing English seems pretty straightforward. How about we simply separate on whitespace? In Python, we could run the split function on a sentence, resulting in this sequence of tokens. But there are issues here. For one, we want to separate the currency symbol from the amount rather than treating them as a single unit. Second, the period is still attached to the last word, and they should be separate as well. Now, we could solve this using regexes, but there are other challenges with tokenization. Separating on whitespace doesn't apply to languages without it, which means our writing system will influence how we tokenize. There'll be corner cases, such as acronyms like this example of NYC, which we would want treated as a single token. Our tokenizer would need to identify and handle this correctly. Complicating things further is the concept of a word itself. Is full moon one word or two words? Does a word always map to one meaning? For example, should contractions such as don't be considered two words? And speaking of which, let's define what a word is for our purpose. A word is the smallest unit of speech that carries some meaning on its own, which I think is a clean definition for NLP. Two related linguistics concepts are morphemes and graphemes. In linguistics, a morpheme is the smallest part of a word which has a meaning, but unlike a word, doesn't stand on its own. So common prefixes and suffixes such as ing, re, and pre would be examples. Words then are composed of one or more morphemes. The second concept is grapheme, which is the smallest unit of a writing system. In English, that would be letters. There are NLP models which operate on individual characters rather than words, and I've proven to be effective. So in light of these challenges, getting tokenization right is critical because it's often the beginning of our pipeline. And while we could write our own tokenizer, thankfully the work's already been done for us and packaged into robust, well-supported libraries such as Spacey. And if we need our tokenizer to handle special cases in a particular domain, these libraries can be extended as well. Let's take a look at how to tokenize with Spacey. So here I've opened a Colab notebook called NLP Demystified Preprocessing. You'll find a link to this notebook in the module page. Alternatively, you can visit the course's GitHub repo and find it under notebooks. I've heavily commented everything and included a lot of extra information to explore after the video. For now, I suggest just following along and focusing on the code. The first thing we need to do is upgrade Spacey. At the time of this recording, a newer version of Spacey is out, but Colab, however, is still using version 2 by default, so we'll upgrade Spacey ourselves. Keep in mind that if you're running this notebook in the cloud, the notebook will time out after a period of inactivity. I believe it's 90 minutes, but I imagine it varies. If that happens, you'll need to rerun this upgrade, otherwise certain things may not work or your results will differ from what's shown. A way to get around this is to run the notebook against a local Jupyter server, and I've included a link at the top on how to do that. All right, so next we'll make sure the upgrade succeeded. All right, and that looks good. And then we'll import. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is download a statistical model for our language, in this case, English. This model will contain things like tokenization rules and also enables Spacey to identify parts of speech, parse sentence structure, identify entities, and more. We'll talk more about those particular capabilities later in the course. For now, we'll install and load the English Core Web Small Model, which is a lightweight model that can help us get started quickly. There are also medium and large models, which we'll use later in the course. 
Just for background information, this model was trained on an annotated corpus called OntuNotes 5, which is a collection of documents comprising blog posts, news articles, conversations, and other communications, all annotated with information such as whether a particular word is a noun or a verb, how a sentence should be parsed, whether a word is a significant entity like a city, and so on. A statistical model was then generated from this corpus. This model is then used to predict things about subsequent documents. If you're familiar with this idea, that's great. If not, don't worry. This will make more sense as we progress in the course. All right, so once we've downloaded the model, we'll load it. And if you want to learn more about what other models Spacey offers, you can check out the links in the text cells which provide a list of available models and talk a bit about their architecture. As you become more comfortable with the material in this course, I recommend you revisit these links to get an idea of what Spacey is doing under the hood. All right, so we've loaded the Spacey library and an appropriate statistical model and we can now reference this model through this NLP object here. All right, let's tokenize a simple string. He didn't want to pay $20 for this book. Now with Spacey, it's straightforward. We'll simply pass the string to the NLP object here. It will tokenize the text and return a container object called doc. We can iterate over this doc object to view the tokens. So these are our tokens for the sentence. Note a few things here. The word didn't is separated into two tokens, did and n apostrophe t. The currency symbol and amount are separated because they are two different concepts, and the period is standing alone as well. This doc object can be indexed and sliced, just like a regular list. A moment earlier I said the doc object is a container object. That's because it contains a collection of other objects, namely tokens and spans. So if we index into the doc object, we get a single token object. This token object offers an API to retrieve a bunch of token attributes, which we'll cover. Slicing a doc object returns a span object for when we want to work with a particular section of text. And for a given token, we can also locate its index position in the doc through the i attribute. One thing to note here is that Spacey's tokenization is non-destructive. This means the original input should always be retrievable. We aren't restricted to tokenizing only individual sentences. We can tokenize paragraphs or entire documents as well. So here we'll tokenize some text comprising two sentences, and we can iterate through the sentences themselves using the doc's sense property. Each sentence then is a span object. All right, so that's tokenization with Spacey. Getting started is pretty straightforward and convenient, but we're just scratching the surface of what's available to us. These token objects themselves carry a lot of information which we'll cover next. And in part two, we'll explore other tokenizers for specific models. Until then, I encourage you to do these exercises here to get more familiar with Spacey Basics, and maybe also try other libraries, such as NLTK. So once we've tokenized our corpus, what's next? From here, we can add additional pre-processing steps as needed. Indeed, a good way to look at pre-processing is as a pipeline, where tokenization is just one step, and where we add additional steps depending on what we want to do. On that note, let's explore a few more common pre-processing steps in the next video.